Hey, Coach, I was um, just trying to do some homework and uh -huh. noticed the streaks on the defensive side. Of, you know, stops, then give up, stops, then give up. How do you try to pull that together? Can you put a little more context so I can answer it? Four out of five possessions uh, stopped the first game, then um, four out of five scored, then four touchdowns out of the first five possessions the second game, then one stopped. Or, or, yeah, once trying to confuse the fans or whatever you're asking about sitting there just four possessionally. No, I mean, I think you the best. Put them together, sure, of course. Um, so you're asking the first game, you know, what was the difference? Why were we able, other than the long hill yeah, run? 20, 20. Right, you had the long hill run and then and then till the till the end, just yeah. the ebbs and flows. And sometimes, right. yeah, so you know, obviously sometimes there are adjustments that need to be made, mm -hmm. momentum in the game. Um, but it's going to come down to that. We got to get off the field on third down. And you got to do it uh, for a complete game and, and handle the situation. It's not just third down in the field. Mm -hmm. can argue the difference has been third down in the red zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that'll continue to be uh, the challenge, and we'll continue to, to work to improve there on, uh, on both offense and defense. In uh, uh, AJ's physical play, he came off, went back in. Um, you know, is it a, you know he's, he's not a guy that does the uh, business decision. Hell no. <laughs> uh, AJ's one of the toughest players I've ever been fortunate enough to coach in this league and um, you know sometimes it's you know you're coming in there whether you're playing cover two or you know you're in quarters and he's got a crack replace he's gonna he's not scared there's no he doesn't go in there with a flashlight um, you know he's he's good to go and he's got his head up and try to teach great uh, fundamentals but a lot of times they, they call in mm -hmm. guys slow to get up and that's all that happened on, on Sunday. And then uh, you know uh, I know the, the first game near the goal line two good passes, and then uh, the Robinson won the last game. What do you all have to, uh, what does he have to do to, you know, uh, defend those uh, red zone passes? Or yeah, and, and a lot of it's just the situation, and a lot of times you're getting, and they check or we check, and in the day, you get down there and there's any kind of pressure. The ball's coming out quick, and you're on, on a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you're in some kind of man coverage or on the outside, regardless of what's going on inside, combination or, or, or pressure. So... Uh, which continue to work at the line of scrimmage, and um, he will. I got all the faith in the world in him, and uh, we've gone against some pretty good matchups. But we got to, as a team, we got to continue to get better, both offensively and defensively, uh, to control situational football. And they said, uh, um, uh, Coach Pete said Sunday or Monday he could let um, Gino go a little bit more. They, um, he's completing 81% of his passes. They, he said the projection's fine with the young tackles now. Uh, does that put y'all on notice that? Well, no, it's just, it's just giving it's just give and take, D. Led. Um, you know, I think what you're seeing in a lot of you're not seeing a ton of man right now, really around the league. I, th I think it's gone in vogue. I mean, you know, people are playing a lot of zone coverages, so people, you know, running a lot of underneath. So there's been a high completion percentages. Um, that trend it, it ebbs and flows in the league, anyways. But you know, obviously, it's about converting and, and scoring touchdowns in the red zone. However, you get down there, whether you're going to run a controlled passing game because they're they're playing such soft zone, whether you're in cover three, uh, different, you know, covers, quarters, cover two, or, you know, combination, quarter, quarter, half, half quarters, whatever you're playing. So I think that's what you're seeing a lot of. And the, so can, the stats can be a little misleading, high per, completion percentage, but I think Pete's gone on record, and he certainly said it Monday, about trying to push the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. So that's a give and take when you're playing a lot of zone if you're disciplined. So I think that's what you're, what you're seeing. Yeah, we played him in with the Jets, like a lot of young quarterbacks. There's a lot that goes on, uh, just even pre-snap. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and bore you, but it sound like you're trying to make excuses for different players here or there, but there's a lot on young quarterbacks, and um, I give him a lot of credit. He's a res obviously a very resilient player. He's playing really well right now. There's a lot to be said for that. You know, a guy gets, doesn't go the way he, uh, he probably envisioned when he got drafted, and he comes back, he keeps swinging, and I got a, so much respect for, for guys like that, and he's... He's been playing really solid football for the Seahawks. What did you like about what San Francisco did on Sunday? Well, I mean, I think you look at that game and they were able to get out ahead and um, I thought they ran the ball pretty effectively. And they got a good team. So does Seattle. So it's kind of the way it goes. It's no different than the week before. Seattle did a really nice job and, and they won the situational battle. And um, they have a heck of a home field advantage and we got to be ready for it. Personnel grouping diversity. Does 
that track back to somebody's system, to a specific coach no, in your it's just, background? No, it's just, Josh, uh, there are a lot of people had an impact on me, not only in coaching, uh, maybe players I've been around, other sports that I've watched. Uh, you know, you, I think a lot of things you learn from. I try to you know, pick people's brains about wisdom and things that you learn from other people, and uh, you got to then make it your own. And so that's kind of where it came from, Josh. It's, maybe it's my background of being a lineman, uh, my fascination with uh, basketball and some of the things about ball movement, and I just kind of just kind of evolved. What kind of stress does that put on the sideline, in-game management, your assistant coaches, your guys? Because if you are, yeah. you're not just rolling out 11 personnel every time and everybody's in the same spot. Sure. Yeah, I think it's maybe it's uh, the logistics in my uh, yeah. background. Um, yeah. Maybe that had something to do, but but in all seriousness, it's uh, yeah, it's got to be coordinated. You got to have really good assistance, which we do. Uh, you know, the easiest thing to do is to sit there in the same personnel, eleven or twelve, and and uh, not change and, and stay static. But if you want to play the way we do, you got to have really uh, smart football players, which we do, and and you have to have really good assistance, no matter what. And we and we have both of those. It feels like it's gone pretty smoothly, game management wise. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's always stuff to work on. Even if you win, to think that you all of a sudden got it all figured out, you'll be humbled so damn quick. It's not funny, and that's what I love about it. Uh, so I, th I think that's the constant. There's always something we got to fix. You're, we're, it's a constant work in progress, and and if you understand that, then you can actually improve. Being out here for the whole week, what are the benefits you hope to get out of it besides you know skipping some cross country flights? Well, there's a lot of benefits, especially early in the season. Uh, I think it's you know kind of where we're at. It's, uh, it's re really the timing couldn't be better if we use it the right way. And uh, I'm thankful we're in an organization that, that allows you to do this and the way the schedule worked out and really thankful for the University of Washington. Um, they've been so accommodating, I can't thank them enough. Are there any things you kind of do to you know, spur that on, being able to have guys kind of spend some time closer together in addition to, to practice? Are there team events, things like that, that you can do with this long a trip? Certainly give them options. Um, you know, we're in there, I got to do my job, and but the, uh, the very, uh, Aware, you know, we're taking the, the players are away from their families or from, you know, their homes, and uh, you try to accommodate and have events, but we're not going to sit here and force, you know, everybody to something or not. And got guys took advantage of it, and uh, now we're back to, you know, Wednesday practice, and we got our work, we got to get done. You mentioned the, the challenges of playing here in Seattle. You know, how does this environment compare? You play in domes, it's loud in every dome, it's loud in a lot of stadiums. How does Seattle compare? Yeah, they've created a unique uh, environment here. Uh, you got a really passionate fan base. Uh, I was up here in 2007 in a wild card game when I was in Washington. Probably the loudest I've ever seen, even the year I spent in the SEC. Um, holy hell, that was loud in that playoff game. Uh, I think it was Joe Gibbs' last game he coached. And then uh, we were up here in the regular season in 13. We were up here in the preseason 12, but in the regular season 13, uh, it's an advantage. I and mean, you could see it play out in the Broncos game, and we got to handle that. Yeah, it's that's a that's a tough one, um, Arch. Just about the fact that I, you see similarities of, of traits of certain players, but I'd never seen one guy as exact same as the other. Uh, Bobby was a terrific player here and still a terrific player. We played him last week. A um, little bit different scheme too. Some of the stuff that they're doing, uh, you know, they made a name for themselves with that Seattle three that got that was trendy, and a lot of people broke off from here because of the success. No different than you're seeing out in LA. A lot of people break off from usually what happens in a lot of industries. Um, yeah, he's a very uh, instinctive, Brooks is a very instinctive player, um, good player coming out of Texas Tech. So they got two young, young linebackers. Barton's pretty solid, too. When it comes to situational football, you've talked a lot about the last mm -hmm. couple weeks getting better. When it comes to Marcus, how do you evaluate where he's been these last two games and where you want him to go in those moments? Well, it's really all of us. I know the quarterback's going to obviously get the attention. I mean, that's the nature of the job and the business. but. He said there's a lot of things we've seen improvement. There's things we've got to do better. We, you know, the penalties are not on him. You know, we got to make sure that we're cleaner there, so you're not off track. And then because you're off track, that especially when it gets tight down the red zone, nobody's really going to pressure you. They're going to sit back and wait whether they play drop eight or whatnot and make you hold the football. And uh, and you're hoping for a play extension or I don't kind of one of those back pylon throws at that point. Otherwise, you're just checking it down. So. Uh, it's important to stay on track. It's not just on the quarterback. It's on all 11 on offense. Yeah, Coach, um, you, you go back and look at the, you know, you know, 
look at Kyle. You can see the people lurking around. Sure. Well, um, you know, how do you, um, you know, keep him uh, pumped up to, you know, keep doing his job and knowing that it's, the ball's going to eventually get to him? Yeah, he's a terrific player. And, uh, you know, it's going to change week to week. And uh, certainly, you know, you're going to evaluate. We, we evaluate everything. Sorry, myself, you know, we've made a commitment, certain things we want in the game plan to stop New Orleans. Does it, he's been targeted uh, as a primary plenty, but that doesn't necessarily mean the ball is going to go there. If people are going to sit there, and it's not just double team. So that's, that's where it's hard. I mean, that's what makes football so great. There's a lot of different variables. And so you get these advanced stats, advanced athletics, and I don't want to sound like I'm taking a shot. I'm not taking a shot. But if people are going to funnel you in there and some of those match shell coverages, right? Well, they're somewhere is exposed, and that's why you're seeing success with other people. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, so again, it's not just the traditional double teams and man, and they're sitting there like that. And so you get the guys that get the snapshot, like, ooh, he's not double. Eh, that's not necessarily the case. He has certain coverages, and there's progressions, and there's reads. Now we can move him around and not continue to, to push the envelope there. But there's things we maybe ask him to sacrifice early on um, to make sure that we are clean in the run game and, and, and some of the protection stuff. Uh, but we have targeted him, and he knows that. And But Kyle's a unique person. The ball will find, and he is going to break out here again, and uh, we're, we're going to win because of it. And But he's an old, he's an unbelievable teammate, unbelievable person, and um, like all of us, we want to win. And, it, you know, it's, it's easy to be happy when you win, when you have 14 catches and, you know, everybody's – celebrating you and you, know, you don't want guys that are happy they have 12 catches for 110 yards and you and you got smoked by 21 points we're trying to have our cake and eat it so we'll continue to do that and he will and i got all the faith in the world in him and and i'll do a better job as well how's the uh, rookie cornerback Tariq Woolen? yeah he's fast yeah he's trying to play physical line of scrimmage he can really run um they got a lot of youth on this team too i remember impressed with those two young tackles cross and uh lucas yeah so